In Toon Boom Studio, you have several options with respect to coloring your animations or drawings. We have simple color, as we have with Bob's blue hair here. And we also have a gradient, which we've done for the highlight and shadow of the eyes. And we've come back in and just added a simple color of white. And we've also added a gradient to the inside of Bob's collar here. In addition to this, we can also do textures. Now, that's whether you decide to do something like a stone or brick texture or a type of pattern. For this example, we're going to give Bob a plaid shirt. So what I'm going to do is go to my color palette and I'm going to click our little box right here and come down to color. And what I want to do is add texture. So I'm going to locate a file here. Let's do plaid texture. And this is a 400 by 400 JPEG. And I've created my texture so it can be tiled seamlessly. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and select my paint bucket. And I'm going to leave Bob's collar white. It's an interesting style shirt, but I'm going to leave the collar white. And I'm just going to fill this side of the shirt. And I'll go ahead and fill the second part. OK. Now. So this is kind of interesting, but that's a lot of pattern there. And you're thinking, OK, well, maybe I know that pattern should have more color in it. So I'm going to go and select my Edit Texture tool. And I'm going to click once. And you can see exactly how large the texture is. I'm going to zoom out here. So this is the full 400 by 400 texture. I'm going to hold down my Shift key and just scale this down. And if you note, we can start seeing a little more color here. I'm going to keep scaling. And now we can see the full pattern that's happening. Now, if I want to move this, I can just simply move the pattern around. And I think the way that's lined up looks pretty good right there. And now I'm going to go to the second texture we did here, and I'm going to scale this down as well until they about match. And I'll move this. Not so much that it's matching because it is a shirt that's not going to match perfectly, but it's going to be kind of close. All right. And I'm going to click right down in my timeline, just in this little blank area to get that little orange highlight to go away. And let's zoom in. I'm going to click once here in my camera view. Let's zoom in. All right. And that's not bad, except for one thing. I think the pattern we have here is a little overpowering with our outline. So because this seems a little bit dark, I have a second pattern that is the exact same plaid, but it's just using lighter colors. So I'm going to come here and simply double click. And we have our information set up here. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and browse. And this time I'm going to select the light plaid texture. I'll click open and then I'll click OK. And so it's now updated with our lighter plaid. So it's just the same colors. It's just a little more frosted out. So our outline still works. Now, you might be thinking this is all well and good, you know, but usually the sleeves look a little bit different. So it shouldn't be flat just across. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to come down and select my cutter tool. And what I want to do is kind of click. And I'm just going to go right along where the sleeve is like an actual shirt pattern and cut out part of the sleeve here. And we'll now go back to our edit texture. And I can click this part of the sleeve. Let's move this a little bit. I'm just going to hold on my space bar so I can get the grabber tool. And what I can do is move that pattern a little bit. I can even rotate it a little. All right. And let's do the same to the other arm. So let's grab our cutter tool. And we'll just follow right where our arm seam is. Let's go right up here. And now I'll select my gradient texture. And I'll hold on my space bar to get my grabber tool. And we'll move this ever so slightly. And rotate it as well. Okay. So there we have Bob and he has a new plaid shirt. Let's zoom out here. I'm going to click just once in our timeline to get rid of that orange line. So by adding texture, we've pushed the envelope as far as just the old humdrum cartoon. 
We've added a little bit of gradient to make the eyes pop. We've added a plaid shirt and we've even altered how that's done. So it doesn't look like the run of the mill. We've just dumped a pattern here. Last but not least, let's go in and not just call this texture. We're going to call this simply light plaid because that's the color we chose. In addition to altering what texture we're using by double clicking on our swatch, I'm going to simply double click now. And I have this set up to tile, but what if we don't want this to tile? So I can simply click untile and I'm going to click OK. And all of a sudden it appears that our shirt has just gone blank. But remember, we still can alter everything. So I'm going to hold down my spacebar to get the grabber tool. And I still have my edit texture selected. So I'm going to click once here. And I can see exactly where this part of the fill is. So I can move this. Start moving things around. I can do the same thing here. And do the same thing with the sleeve. So we're just bringing all the different parts back together. Or we can simply double click and go back to tile. And we just readjust everything the way we had it originally. So to get back to where I was initially, I'm just going to reverse this a little bit. I'm just going to undo a few commands here. And we are back to our plaid shirt. So by adding textures to your color palette and then adjusting them using the edit texture tool and even using other tools like the cutter tool, you can really push how far you want to add some dimension to your cartoons.